Morning folks. So when we left off last night, we'd got the, the basics of the frame all sorted out. And as I told you, now we're gonna start building the legs. Um, if you've been watching my videos on the, the seat box, the procedure's exactly the same. So you can maybe skip the next two or three minutes if you've already seen it. But for those of you that haven't seen how I do it, it's very simple. I start off with a basic plastic pad. This is 110 millimeters square, quite large, because I found that on my previous uh, platform, it gave me a very good um, footprint for the, the legs to, to hold me in the mud. Uh, it's about five millimeters thick, and it was made of one of these chopping boards. Originally, it was like sort of that. Um, dirt cheap. Uh, I got three of these for virtually nothing uh, at the local uh, cheapo store. Um, I'm going to use the 20 millimeter round um, legs. Uh, this is three millimeters in, in width and I've drilled a six millimeter hole in the bottom. 350 millimeters long, mentioned that right at the start I believe. And I've made myself a couple of side brackets here and I've drilled the holes ready to accept what I need to, to do. Uh, an assortment of bolts and so on, but we'll get to that now and I'll show you exactly how this all works. And the first thing you have to do, take the big bolt, all M M6 bolts, washer, take it through the outside of this first one, through the hole in the leg, take the other one, another washer, and then I'm using an M6 nylon lock nut. Now you can gather that this is far too long. Um, I didn't have anything of the right size, so I'm just gonna uh, use this and then cut it down with a hacksaw shortly. So we're gonna tighten that up, which I'll do now, and then we're going to put that onto the pad itself. And here we are with the finished article. I've just tightened the, the bolt up, so these are just a, a friction fit. I don't want them being too floppy, but I don't want them being too tight either, just so you can just move them around like that. Um, I've chopped off the, the bolt, as I said, and I've just used a file to just round over the edges so nothing catches. So now we've got to attach it to the, the pad. I've got a scrap piece of wood and we're going to just put it in the centre of that piece of wood and just drill down through the four holes I've drilled in these uh, angle brackets here. Angle brackets, I may have mentioned before, they're 25 millimeter by 25 millimeter, and it's a 1.6 millimeter thickness. Now, before I start drilling, I should mention these two. These are just offcuts from a 20 millimeter piece of aluminium, uh, tube square aluminium. And the idea is that you put these in between here and obviously here. Your leg is 20 millimeters, so by doing this, it keeps these two guides parallel with each other. And that's quite important because you wouldn't want to be trying to move the leg uh, backwards and forwards and then find that this is pinched in and this is wedged out. It really doesn't help. So by just putting these two bits of aluminium in there, you're making sure that everything is going to stay the same. So really all we need to do now, make sure we're pretty much central. This isn't totally critical, but as central as you can, obviously. And just drill the hole. into a piece of scrap wood, preferably not your bench. Take a bolt and a washer. Through the top, just clean off your pad. Then put it through the hole you just made. Bit awkward because I'm doing this with a camera. Okay, then another washer and a nylock nylon locking nuts. We call them nylon nylock nuts in the UK, but nylon locking nuts elsewhere. Put that on and I'm going to use a nut spinner just to, to do it. Tighten it up. And I'm not going to tighten this all the way just at the moment. I'll just pinch it up later. Just a nice loose fit. That should do. Just so I can still move this around on the plate. Now this has fallen out. 
But what I'll do now is just reinsert, make sure everything's square. In fact, I'll turn that around, make sure everything's square, and then just drill the second hole. And repeat the procedure for this one and the other two. And here we are. That's all the nuts and bolts fitted. I've cut them off at the base uh, with the hacksaw and I've also just uh, used the file just to round off any edges. Obviously I've taken out these two temporary spacers and you can now see that if I need it to, this can fold like that. Normally when you're on the bank, it'll probably go to no more than that, but if you just ever needed it to for storage or something, at least they do fold flat. And again, I think I may have mentioned this before, certainly I did on the, the seat box ones. The reason I've got these nuts showing at the bottom, and the reason they're nylock nuts is because they do exactly that, they lock. But the reason they're showing on the bottom is that I found when I made the very first uh, version of this, that I had a flat bottom and it used to slide down through mud and stones and so on. And by allowing these nuts to, to stick out, I ended up with something which didn't move anymore. So it serves a couple of purposes. Anyway, I'll, um, I'll just get on and I'll finish off all the other legs. We'll get them fitted to the, the main frame and then we'll think about sorting out the wheels. So that's the, the legs on the main frame and we're now pretty much uh, good to go for the, the basic product. What we have to do now, of course, is to fit the wheels. And to do that, I've made up these brackets. I'll just come around a bit closer so I can show you what I've been doing. This is just a section of the um, 32 millimeter square aluminium that we've been using already. Uh, it's 100 millimeters long. I've drilled a 25 millimeter hole down through the center and I've got two six millimeter holes going through each side there. I've also taken the opportunity to drill a hole there. That's where the threaded insert's going to go and there'll be a knob there because this is what's going to be the bracket to hold the wheels on. And it's gonna go probably about there. Don't want it to be in the center because I want it to be slightly weight forward. My wheels are gonna be sitting somewhere out here. So if I'm gonna use this and lift up from here, I want a little bit of weight forward. If you have the weight at the back and you're sort of trying to stop it from lifting up, that's not so good. It's a bit of a guess, but up to now, I haven't done too badly with that. Um, so really, I think what I'm gonna do is Probably go with what I said there. I'll get these on, just bolt them through, and once we've done that, we can start thinking about the axles and the supports, and of course the wheels themselves. I've got the first clamp on, just to hold the, the bracket in place here. But before I drill the holes, just got to remember that uh, we're going through, obviously through the bracket itself, and then through this main beam here, but behind it, there's a support bracket for this plate here. So I can't put a bolt through and put a nut on it. So what I'm gonna do is, as I've shown you before on, on other projects, I'm gonna use a 5.5 millimeter drill bit. It'll go through this because these are six millimeter, but then the 5.5 will start from this wall here and go through all the way through there. And then what I'll do is I'll screw it in just as if it was a screw and it will make its own hole, a threaded hole. These are the bolts I'm going to use. Um, they've got quite a, a large head on it. Just take your time. As I say, you're making your own thread. You can feel it bite. I think that's tight enough. It certainly needs to be. <laughs> okay, I'll get the other one done and then we'll talk about the uprights. Okay, so that's the, the brackets fitted. Um, they've gone in quite neatly. Um, I've also taken the opportunity to put the threaded inserts in and obviously I put these knobs on whilst I was at it. Now if you're going to be using rivnuts as we've discussed on uh, earlier parts of this project I would suggest you get those fitted before you actually fit them to the, um, the main frame here. Right next thing is to get the wheels on and get the upright sorted. So this is the arrangement I had on my previous uh, platform it's worked very well over the years. I see no reason to particularly change much. Um, the only thing I am going to do is I did find that uh, these 200 millimeter diameter wheels, although they've been good on mud, 
I rarely use them on mud. I tended to use them going through fairly long grass. Um, and it did create a little bit of rolling resistance. So, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use these. These are 300 millimeter wheels and I'll just see if that makes any difference. Worst case, if it doesn't work, I can always take those off the old one and use those on the new one. So it turns out that these wheels have a 10 millimeter axle, which is a bit thinner than the ones I use on the other box. So I looked in the DIY store and they had some axles that were supposed to be 10 millimeters and they seemed a very sloppy fit through this bearing here. So I decided to do pretty much what I always do and figure something out myself. Now, those of you who do wheels will probably just uh, chastise me for this, but I've just done it my way as usual. I've got this stainless steel 10 millimeter threaded bar. I've put a nylon locking nut on this end. And if necessary, I'll put a pin through there. If it decides to move, there's a nylon lock nut on this side. And as you can see, it moves perfectly smoothly. This is just a section of uh, tube, which I've cut off. It's uh, about 20 millimeters to create me a standoff. This is one inch, uh, sorry, 25 millimeter, show my age, um, aluminum tube, which is 1.6 millimeter wall depth. Uh, pull that along there. And that, in a second, will sit in here and go through this. Now, I will actually fix this on here at some point, but I haven't got round to that yet. Um, let me just put this in. I haven't actually decided how long this is going to be, by the way, so I'll just cut that to length shortly. But let me just put this in first. That's the wheel on for a test fit. And as you can see, by putting this spacer in here, this 20 millimeter spacer, what that's done, it's studded off away from this upright. Just in case we get any mud or grass or anything going through here, there's enough gap there to stop it from clogging up. I think I'm happy enough with that. And so I'm going to fit the uh, wheel on the other side, but I'm also going to put a sleeve across here of this same uh, aluminium material here, just to hold this in place. Just measure up for the other wheel and that's now everything assembled but i should also mention the the reason i've left the crossbar in the middle you're probably wondering about that instead of just having stub axles um the reason is quite simple um really if i'd gone to stub axles down here then i would have had to have made square uh, holes to take a square section of aluminium there so they don't twist around and and basically uh, go out of true the only thing left for me to do now is to make the arms. And would you believe I haven't actually decided how to do that yet. I'm not sure whether I want a push or a pull or a wheelbarrow or some sort of trolley. So I'm going to go and have a, a cup of coffee. Got a few thoughts in my head and then we'll come back and we'll get this thing finished. OK, so I've had my coffee and I've made my decision and I've decided to pretty much go with the same way as I uh, had the original trolley, which was a central uh, pull along system from here. It will be somewhat modified, but I'll show you that as I go along and basically to achieve the end I've taken a 32, 32 millimeter piece of the tubing I put an insert and a knob on it and that will basically sit in the center here like that and be bolted down through then There'll be a, an arm which comes out That'll be held in place by the the knob there but it'll also need a bit of a, an angle in it. And again, we'll show you that as we go along. But this is the simplest and easiest way I found to do it. Um, I did consider having uh, wheelbarrow arms and all the rest of it so I can push and pull, but that just included a bit more weight and I don't need it for what I need this for. So I'm gonna go with this system. If you decide you want wheelbarrow arms, feel free to, to make something up. And it can be very similar to the arm I'm making, so nothing difficult there. I've marked the centre point of this central cross member here and this frontal cross member here and I've also drilled two 6mm holes in the top. So remember we've got to go all the way through and you can end up with your drill going off like this. So the way I do it is I've just got a block of wood and I've drilled a 6mm hole on the drill press so I know it's straight. Put your drill in, find the hole, allow it to go down then clamp this down firmly with your hand so you know it's square. You can also use a, um, 
a clamp for this, but I find that uh, it works for me just to do it this way. And then just drill the hole. There we are. Just with this other one. Make sure your fingers are out of the way underneath. Okay, job done. And just to prove it works, here's the top hole and the middle hole. And that's pretty central, even if I do say so myself. There we go. Take the clamp off now. it on and of course this arm will then go in there that locks down now we just have to crank this arm up a little bit so it's comfortable to carry and when I say crank this arm up a little bit what I mean is something like this this is the one for my previous uh, trolley platform and uh, it's actually worked very well so no point in reinventing the wheel I was actually going to just use this on here, but as I'm doing the video, I'd better make one for you, hadn't I, guys? Now, you want it so that it sits at around about the height of your hand. But this one is a little bit high because it's based on the old trolley. So I'll make my one coming down to about here. But again, you just lift up and then you're on your way. I've cut the new arm out of this uh, 25 millimeter square tube. It's, uh, I think it's just two millimeter in um, thickness and I've cut it at 900 millimeters long Now there's no hard and fast rule for this guys um, when you're pulling this along behind you or pushing it in front of you just got to make sure that your, your heels don't catch on anything and that's how I arrived at this 900 millimeters I've also taken the time to drill out this uh, 16 millimeter hole and that's going to take the handle as per this one um, I'm probably going to modify that a little bit, make it a little bit more comfortable to hold, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, so I'll get to that shortly. I've also cut, sorry I haven't cut yet, I'm just about to cut, if I can get this to, there we go. You can see I've got a, a 90 degree line and then two lines out here. Uh, that total angle makes something like um, 15 degrees. Uh, the easy way to do that, rather than trying to measure out 15 degrees, is just to come 6 millimetres either side of the upright. Having cut that out, we're going to end up with basically that. I've been over to the bandsaw and I've cut my notch, as I just explained. And now I'm just going to bend this up, like that. And the angle is fractionally less than the previous one, which is pretty much what I wanted. It doesn't actually matter if, sorry about the noise, it doesn't actually matter if these um, join up at that point there. This is just to give me a rough idea of how it's going to sit when it goes down onto the uh, frame itself. I just need to do a quick trial fitting to make sure everything's at the right height. I've just put a bar in there just to see, and that's just a fraction lower than my hand sits, so when I lift up, that, that seems about right to me. So now I've just got to get the side plates on to hold everything in place. These side plates are made out of uh, 50 millimeter by 130 millimeter long by three millimeter aluminium. And I'm just gonna offer this up to here, draw a line, and that's where I'm gonna cut to make the actual plate up. There's my line, so I'm just going to cut off this bottom area and I'm going to do it on both plates at the same time. And there we are. All I've got to do now is just offer these up to the handle and just use pop rivets to hold them in place. Everything fixed up, got four rivets in each side, 
Uh, you may want to use bolts, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to try rivets this time. Last time I had rivets and bolts, but I think this will probably do it. As I say though, it's entirely up to you. The last thing I've got to do is to fit the handle. Now, as you saw previously, I just fitted it in like that, put a bolt through it, and job done. You can put some tape on it or whatever. That actually worked very well, but it did give me a little bit of a, an issue with trying to hold across that. You can hold it on one side or the other. Eh, it depends on how far you got to walk. So I'm going to try an experiment, which I'll show you now. I fitted the basic handle, and you could stop here if you want to, as I say, and just use that. And all I've done is just run a, a 4mm bolt straight through it. But I've also drilled through these two pieces of 32mm uh, square scrap and drilled 16mm holes through one end and 20mm holes through the other. And the plan is I'll fit them to the handle. And there's no hard and fast size for this, it's just whatever seems to fit my hand. Ah, right. Stay with me. <laughs> Put that one in first. And then this one. There we go. So once these are secured in place, I'm going to have this as a pull handle instead of having to hold on to this central area here. So that's it then, guys. As before, I've just fixed these together using bolts and I've now got the handle I required. Just something more comfortable for either single or double handed. So that's it then folks, everything finished. I put my box, my bag and my net bag on top of here for you so you can see it. Um, I use these straps, tie down straps to hold everything together when I'm actually moving it. And of course, when I get to the, the bank, I just detach the wheels and then use the legs. Now, for those of you that don't want to build it this way, um, as you've seen, I've got this, this gap here because I've got the plate out. You can actually do what I used to have here, which is the box I've been using for the last four or five years. Uh, very much the same. The only difference is that this box didn't have its own foot plate. And so I just literally put a, a flat plate in front of it and you can then sit on top of it with your feet. Uh, nice and comfortable. As I've said all along, this is my idea of how you do it and hopefully I've shown you how to uh, overcome any difficulties you might have foreseen yourselves but in the end it's all about your own imagination. Um, you may think that some of the stuff I've actually created here isn't quite right for you so off you go. Let's uh, get some drawings done and uh, come back to me and show, you, show me what you've built. Anyway that's it guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, you can. And until the next time, bye for now.